Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have a very abbreviated meeting uh, this evening. We will handle a couple of the informal applications. We do not have a physical quorum here as required by law, uh, so we cannot take any actions tonight. The um, agenda will be abbreviated. Uh, there are some uh, extension items on our agenda. We will be unable to take those. We will be unable to take uh, the minutes uh, for those who are playing at home. That's a real disappointment, of course. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we will be unable to adopt our 2024 schedule. But we can hear at least and give the courtesy of, of those who have come down here uh, with their applications to at least uh, hear them out. And um, unfortunately, we can't schedule them for a public hearing or take other action, but we can hear them. So the first one that we have on our agenda is uh, Panetti to Main Street, Kisco Park. This is an application for a site development plan approval, an application for a preliminary subdivision approval, stormwater management, erosion and sedimentation control for construction of a new single family residence. Uh, good evening. I'm here uh, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, I'm Ralph Alconzetti. I'm the engineer for the project. Um, I can pull up my screen. Um, if that's okay. Yeah, perfect. Mr. Chairman, while while the applicant is pulling up their screen, I want to just inform you that the Chapel Central School District representative has left the meeting. Yeah, no, we heard. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, as was noted, this is uh, right now a a single family, one one house on this property. We're looking to subdivide it for two building lots, um, keeping the existing house. Um, there is an existing wetland uh, in this area where my cursor is. Um, the existing house is here at pretty close to Main Street, and the existing septic is right behind the house. Um, our proposal is to subdivide it As this plan shows, with the property line right here where my cursor is, um, house in this location, um, conforming to the setbacks, septic in this area, and we have some stormwater in this area here where my, where my cursor is now. Um, I kind of jumped into this. Uh, I know there was a, another consultant uh, architect, I believe, that was uh, uh, doing the subdivision. I kind of took it over. Um, but I did get a, everyone's memos, and I didn't see anything in there that, that is um, major. But uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Okay, correct. Yeah. Sabrina, do you want to run through your points in your uh, memo? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, this has greatly improved since the last time this application appeared before your board. Um, it is still a type two action, so there's no need to go any further with it. the Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, the revised plans do um, indicate the correct zoning district, but we have not received uh, any new application materials correcting that in the application material. Um, my third comment is regarding the coverage calculations worksheet. There are both lots are within the coverage requirements, the minimum uh, building coverage and the minimum development coverage, so or the maximum allowable, I should say. So there's no issues there. Um, a couple, uh, there's one addition that I had to the zoning conformance table, and that is to include the width at the front lot line, incorporate that, that 75 foot into that zoning conformance table, it would be helpful. Um, and you know, the only, I, I really had no other issues from a, a planning perspective. Um, I would defer to both uh, Bob Sealy and Dennis Caroni in regards to their areas of specialty. I have no objection to setting a public hearing for this at your next meeting. Okay, thank you. Bob, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> Go over them quickly. Uh, stormwater comments, I break them down. This T1 is basically additional soil testing is required. Um, also, too, there's additional areas of impervious which they should take up and incorporate into the plans, which is ST2, uh, ST3, and ST4. Basically, just additional storm events that should be incorporated into the uh, SWIP for the uh, one year, 10 year, 24 hour storm events. Um, basically, ST5 and ST6 are just minor technical items that should be incorporated into the plan. They should be stamped and signed. 
ST7, they should re uh, submit a uh, stormwater management application along with a fee of $500. Uh, ST8, basically, obviously, this is 5,000 square feet of uh, disturbance, so it's going to need a, a New York State DEC SWIP uh, as well. And I have general comments, basically, GC1 is stopping site distances they should show along the roadway, the entrance, to make certain they do uh, meet the required stopping site distance for the posted speeds of 25 mph. Um, also, to GC2, they should uh, provide the minimum separation distance between the drainage and the on-site wastewater treatment in accordance with Westchester County. Uh, GC3, there's two retaining walls, one on the north side, one on the south side of the driveway, which requires uh, structural calculations and sections as well. And GC5 are just general notes I'd like to see on every plane which regards um, water service connection and also GC6. The pavement replacement should include standard details that we have in Chapter 1 and 9, which I outlined A, B, C, and D. Uh, GC7, basically just general notes. It's a standard note that you can put on the water service. Everything really, believe it or not, has to be looked at and approved by the, the DPW, the water service lines. <clears throat> and then GC8 is the driveway profile, has some technical comments as I indicated on A, B, C, and D. GC9 is going to be the street opening permit, and uh, obviously they should provide a subdivision map prepared by the New York State DOS, reviewed by the planning board, and provide copies of the on-site wastewater treatment system as approved by the Westchester County as well. And those are my comments for tonight on this application, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Mr. Alfonsetti, uh, any issues or problems with uh, any of those? Any questions on uh, the town engineer's comments? Uh, just one quick question, Bob. You mentioned um, the septic system approval on the um, for the lot, but I don't have to get septic system approval now. I just have to show the ones viable. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. But you are uh, on the subdivision on the subdivision map. You show the standard table, which has all your deep test data. Correct. On it, so make certain that's incorporated onto the uh, subdivision map. Right. Yep. <coughs> okay. Dennis, you had some comments? Yes, thank you. You have to speak up, you're really far away. <laughs> um, so the applicant uh, did uh, do an update of the original delineation from 2010. Um, I believe it was over the summer. So that meets 137-5B. Uh, for delineation within 12 months of filing the application. Uh, when I originally went out there in February, and I still felt the same when I went out in October, um, I just think, um, and I don't know, Ralph, if maybe you can move your cursor to the three flags that I'm talking about on the lowest outer there, six, seven, and eight. Um, I, I included the photos this time around because those are the same pink flags that I had dropped uh, back in February. They bump out that area slightly. I don't know. I paste it. It's maybe 10 feet-ish, 12 feet-ish. It's just that I think that section of the wetland is just, just a little bit bigger. So I, I just wanted to get those resurveyed just so that that's accurate. And my, my focus was probably more the existing septic at the time. I got a copy of the plan versus what was proposed. I'm not sure if that would or would not even maybe touch a wood guide rail, but I just wanted to make sure that that was accurate. So that was one of the comments with respect to the wetlands. And I, I know I've asked this in prior permits, just from looking at the site from being out there, I, I, I think you're going to end up removing at least one tree possibly, and others are kind of close enough that, you know, we probably would look to try to institute some forms of protection during construction just to you know, if you're looking to keep those to try to preserve them as best we can. So that, I haven't really seen anything of all the submissions to this point regarding the trees. So it, it would be nice to get confirmation that you're not removing any trees, or if you are, just, you know, submit the tree removal permit application, we can get, you know, started on that as well. And those are my comments. Thank you. So we've, we've, uh, we've contacted the surveyor. He's going to update those three flags, and he's also going to locate the trees on the proposed lot. Okay. Do you, do you think tree, I mean, have you seen it? I mean, do you, do you feel at least one tree's coming down, for example? There may be one. That's why we're going to have them out there and just, just get them and, and okay. we'll know for sure then. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Great.
Okay. Any comments? Thoughts? Dick, any thoughts, comments? Okay. Um, if not, we the only issue that we had was whether or not a tree application had to be filed. Otherwise, we were going to be set to be scheduled, scheduling this for a public hearing. So we'll try to do that the next time we meet, which is going to be what? The 21st. 21st, just before Thanksgiving. Okay. So anyway, uh, if you could attend to those notes that we have from, uh, from Bob and uh, Dennis, uh, we can try to move this along for you as, as quickly as we can. And, okay. uh, go from there. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so just, just so, so the next meeting, I'd come in, and then that's when we would schedule for the next next that's meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Apologies again for not being able to make the decision. Okay. No, 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 no. So the next item we have is the Liars of Life Majesty and Kumar. Uh, 14 and 10, uh, Oakdale Lane. This is an application for a preliminary subdivision file approval for a lot line change. Lot line adjustment. Yes. Excuse me, yes. My name is Dawn Ford. I'm from the law firm of Pelican Associates. I represent the applicant, the Erica Grazer's team, Erica Fool Trust. And as uh, the chairman said, we are asking the, that the board consider a lot line change. And subdivision approval. Um, this is a property that was developed in the early 70s, and the, the lead the developers did a property swap that was not recorded in early 1970, 71, and 72 um, to accommodate the septic field on lot four, which is the property of Rizersky. Um, If I could pull up the map, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Okay, you see here, uh, this is the lot <coughs> owned by Wojcicki, and lot three is owned by applicant Kumar. This is the existing tax lot, and the dark lines indicate the existing legal, legal property line. And we believe that it was done to accommodate the second field located on Wojcicki property. This property swap does not result in any new lots and does not result in any change in the area of the properties. Um, there is a, an issue with some out of possession fence, it's 2.6 feet, and a little piece of the driveway of Rizersky here is 1.9 feet. And the parties have agreed that the Rizersky will be approached to be wholly within the property of their. Of their um, I, I think that's exactly what we're asking for is for that the, that the tax map lot be listed to the property description. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Mrs. Courtney, do you have the survey with the colored lines on it? I do. I think it would be helpful for the board to see that since there are colors showing the difference. Sure. I apologize. I don't know how to use tabs here. Just one second. Here we go. Thank you. So, th this is the Rajasthi right, property lot four, and this is the Kumar property lot three. This is the existing tax map lot line here, and the uh, colored lines indicate the property boundaries. And have these lots been essentially used in this manner by the neighbors? They have. They have. Uh, nothing has changed on these properties since they were, the properties were constructed and developed in the early 1970s. Uh, there was a variance um, granted for the construction of a pool on lot four and tennis court on lot three. All that was done in the 70s as well. So the properties have existed in this condition since the 1970s. Okay. Sabrina, you got some thoughts? Uh, I did. Uh, you know, just to, to reiterate, the 
the deeds filed regarding these two properties reflect a lot line change. It's the map that does not. So this is an attempt to bring the map to be inconsistent, to be consistent with the deed filing. Um, it's a type two action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, I think it's important to note that these lots predate the town's building coverage requirements. Um, but they are in the maximum allowable building coverage. Uh, the development coverage, um, you know, they predate development coverage and they are outside of development coverage limits. So just to kind of clarify, if any work is to be done on these lots in the future, they would need to see development coverage variances. Um, I think it's important um, to note that there's a small portion of the Reserski driveway and the vinyl fence that does encroach into uh, the Kumar lot. Um, that should probably be, the fence should probably be relocated and the driveway should probably be uh, removed so that there's no encroachment across the lot line. Um, but I leave it up to the applicant to address that however they need to address it or get an easement from the neighbor to allow that to happen. And that's all my comments. I, I don't have any problem with this going to public hearing. Right. So this is, uh, sorry, this is Rohit uh, Kumar, um, the owner of the other sign, like the other property. Um, so I think just want to put it on record that uh, it's been agreed that uh, those improvements that uh, were mentioned uh, will be removed. Uh, okay, that's correct. Uh, we've, we've agreed as between parties to have those accounts removed. Okay. And I also have a question, if I may. Sabrina, what was it that you said about uh, any future development? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. So the town today, as of the 1990s, instituted what we call coverage limitations. So there are separate. Yeah coverage requirements for all buildings, and there are separate coverage limitations related to development on the lot. Mm -hmm. So if you were to put additional buildings or um, uh, recreational uh, things on your lot or walkways or patios or terraces, you would need to uh, apply for a building permit and then fill out a coverage calculation worksheet. You would most likely be over the development coverage limitations that are allowed under today's standards. But it only comes into effect if you're doing new things on your property. Right. Okay. So fill the uh, like a building permit and give a uh, coverage worksheet if anything new is taken. Correct. Yes. yes. Understand. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any questions? No. Dick, any questions on this? Normally, we were really going to try to uh, accelerate this way and get you to a public hearing, get you out of here, because we understand that you have a, a sale pending, but we can't do that this evening. Do it. Um, I certainly appreciate that. So, um, we'll schedule for the next meeting. And, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I know you can't make an action to do it, but um, as the director of planning, I wouldn't want to uh, aggravate the board, but we could possibly draft up a resolution to send to you guys for consideration without an action. Yeah, I, um, so, but we can't schedule a public stuff for the public in December. No, you, you, no, it'll be, you can't schedule the public or whatnot, but at least we might be able sure. to. Sure, uh, fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you, Sabrina. Yeah, and I can also speak with council that maybe we can we 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 can make a decision to to uh, because we typically put lot line changes on for a public hearing their very first right appearance, and so maybe there's some leeway for us to do that for the next time this is on. Yeah, I was surprised that it wasn't already scheduled for a public. Well, there was some, there was some, some issues in regards to um, the app on the applicant's part that we didn't want to rush it to public hearing unless we had everything tied up from the applicant. Okay. So, but those but we, been, all of that's been tied up, so resolved. I'll work, yeah, I'll work with council after the meeting and see if we can do something. Okay. I'd like to try to accommodate you so if we can. It's uh, usually Thank just an administrative so thing. Okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Thank you. And I think we'll drop off. Thank you so much. Our next application uh, is Piccolino, and she's 
Uh, before we move on, I just have a question. I'm, I'm Eric Brzezinski. I'm the son of... Oh, sure. Sure. Um, you can, so, I, I, you know. <laughs> Kind of unofficial. Um, so when you say that it's going to be a public meeting, and and that could be in January, is that no, no. going to be the next meeting? The next meeting, we we hope we can actually uh, negotiate this so it will be a public hearing the next time we meet, which is in two weeks, actually less than two weeks, and so that we'll have a public hearing, uh, assuming that there are not going to be throngs of people here interested in this application. We'll probably close the public hearing. You know, if we have the resolution prepared, we should have the resolution adopted uh, next time around, uh, which means you're done with us. Wonderful. Thank you. Most people say that. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> <very> <laughs> <much>. <laughs> no offense, but thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay. So that's uh, that's what we're trying to do, and, and we would have been able to do that if we had uh, didn't have any problems we had tonight. Anyway, okay. Very good. Great. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next application is Picolino, 15 Little Pine Road. Application for a site development plan approval for relocation of a clearing grading middle line to construct an in-ground swimming pool. Uh, good evening. I'm back for this one. Um, again, I'm going to share my screen to show you the map here. Yeah. I think it should be up. Everyone can see that. So um, I'm going to hopefully get my dates correct. Um, I believe this lot received site plan approval in 2004. Uh, I believe the planning board back in 1988 um, did a clearing grading limit line on this plan, on this lot. Um, I, I zoomed in there. So this lot has an existing house on an existing driveway. Um, I believe at some point there was a single family house on this lot that burnt down somewhere around 1990, maybe year 2000, somewhere in there. I don't know the exact date. Um, but this lot received site plan approval in 2004. And there was a clean green limit line that goes right through this, I'm going to call it a terrace. Um, it's essentially a very flat lawn area. It's surrounded by uh, stone retaining walls. Obviously, it was previously disturbed. Um, and we are proposing to move the current grading limit line around the existing wall so that this area can be used for a pool. And I my so the existing line cuts the area right here, as you can see from my cursor, and we're looking to move it around this area here. Again, this area um, was previously disturbed. It's always been disturbed. It's been graded. Um, we're not changing the grade of it at all. We're basically going to dig a hole, put a pool in, um, and I. I I think that's it. It's as simple as that for me. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Sabrina, your thoughts? Okay. Um, keeping in form with everything else tonight is the type two action in accordance with Seeker. Um, the application is actually zoning compliant and meets required setbacks and building and development coverage. Um, the change in the clearing grading limit line that the applicant um, has requested, um, you know, what he's saying is true. That stone, the, the stone wall that is reflected on the plans has been there going back to the 70s. Um, it is uh, amazing that at the time the subdivision was created, that clearing the grading limit line was drawn clear across, across the backyard. So I have um, no issue with the applicant shifting the clearing and grading limit line. It makes sense given the historical use of the property. Um, you know, and then uh, that's really <coughs> I, I don't even think in this instance that any type of mitigation would be required due to the change in the clearing and grading limit line because the lot has been a lot in this in this development status in, in regards to where the stone wall is since the 70s. So 
So okay. that's all my comments. I have no, I have no matter, no, no problem. If when the next time the board can make a decision that this goes to public hearing. Yep. Thank you, Bob Hudson. Uh, questions or issues? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, based on my review of Westchester County GIS. Municipal tax parcel viewer for years 2007 to 221. It appears the applicant had put on the terrace after the implementation of the uh, stormwater rules and regulations. Uh, they put in approximately about um, about 2,350 square foot terrace, and then they added the pool, so they're at about 3,150 square feet, which well exceeds the uh, stormwater regulations of new and previous of 1,000. So now they have to retrofit terrace and the pool and implement new stormwater regulations. So that's what they have to do for SD1. And because of that, they have to submit a completed stormwater management application and a fee. Uh, then I have two general comments. Um, the applicant is proposing to amend it. Uh, if the planning board is inclined to approve it, they would have to get a clearing and written line declaration and an associated map as well to memorialize what they plan on doing. So in the future, owners are aware of it future when they do purchase the property if they sell it. And then GC2 is just general notes uh, that apply to the plan uh, that are put on pretty much every site. Right. Plan. Notes. Mm -hmm. Notes. And that's all I have. Okay. Dennis, you had some other thoughts? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I echo uh, Sabrina. Um, I think I was able to make it out in the 1947 area at the wall in the back. Blip, huh? Right. And, you know, I, I'm not a... Um, construction history person, but it would be interesting for someone to look at that wall and tell me when they thought it was built just based on the materials, because of course it looks nothing like you know any of the walls today. So, you know, I wouldn't even know if I was out there in, in my role with the town if somebody said, gee, where am I supposed to stop mowing my lawn in this courtyard to honor this right. line? I mean, it, 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 it served no purpose, so that's why I'm, I have no problem moving, moving it to follow the outline of the wall either. Okay, thank you. Very good. So again, this would be uh, normally something that we would move to a uh, public hearing uh, for our next time. So I guess we will schedule it for a very quick, continued, informal next time, and then take the action just to set it up for a public hearing for December. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm a little confused, Sabrina. Um, the property has a lot of uh, hard you know, road and bricks and things like that. And <coughs> all that counted. But why why does the that allow that a pool be put in if, if the original stuff is over or at the new limit? It's not there is no exceedance of coverage here. This lot is much bigger than the area that you're being shown right now. Most of it is actually in a conservation is conservation lands. Okay. So so what you're seeing the development on the lot does not um, um, reach go over the maximum allowable coverage. How large is the lot? It looks to be almost four acres or so from the picture. Yeah. All right. I believe it's just about six. Six, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's six point zero one acres. Okay. Yeah. This, this where my where my cursor is, this is the conservation easement. So everything outside of that is conservation easement. Um this is all you know, within the within the and out outside our, our area. Um so yeah, it's a pretty small area that we're developing or developing. Yeah, and, and that stone wall really is a, 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 a historical barrier, if you will, in regards to disturbance, so. All right. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, so I don't think there's any additional, do we need additional materials for the next time around? Well, you need yeah, the, the stone wall, yeah. The storm yeah. Storm yeah. Storm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have enough time to get that in uh, for Bob? Maybe we should do this then for the December meeting? When? I'm sure we're past the, the date for submission for the next meeting, right? 
Oh, I think as, as soon as uh, Mr. Alfonsetti can get the information in accordingly. And schedule the informal? Okay. Yeah. What is the deadline for the next meeting? What? It, it passed already. Oh. The next deadline is Monday for um, yeah. for the December 5th meeting, but I think that we're hoping you could get this in before the next meeting on November 21st. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Okay, very good. Super. Okay. Yep, yep. thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good night. All right. So that about wraps it up for what we can do this evening, right? Were you here for something else? I'm done, thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, we can't take any action. We don't have a physical quorum here. So you were here for uh, Westchester Papers? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, as we explained at the beginning, we can't take action because we, this is sort of like, a, you know, undercover type of meeting we're having today. So we can't take action because we didn't have a physical, a physical quorum here. So what we'll do is this will be on the next agenda. Um, and uh, we'll be here in that point. Okay. So um, I think we're set. Can we close the meeting? We can't think of the motion. Not. You meeting. couldn't open it. You can't close it. So, <laughs> this is great. Less work. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you.